NES has an enduring and influential legacy in the world of video games, having had pioneering and iconic franchises such as Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, Mega Man, Metroid and so many others debut on its platform. Its controller design, overall build quality and vast library of games make it one of the best and most nostalgic consoles ever. There were over 700 licensed games for the NES, of which a little more than 350 were released in North America. Of these, we explore the games that are very good but not quite as popular as they should be. Let's go! G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, 1991. The storyline of this action-adventure game is typical of G.I. Joe. You take control of a team of three G.I. Joe characters, each with their own set of strengths, who must navigate through six interesting stages in order to bring down the Cobra organization. The character roster of this game consists of popular characters such as Duke, Rock and Roll, Snake Eyes, Captain Gridiron, and Hawk, who initially only gives orders but becomes a playable character for the final stage. The game's structure involves boss fights at the end of stages, where the bosses are notable adversaries from the Cobra organization, with a final boss being the Cobra commander himself. The game received positive responses for its gameplay mechanics, controls, as well as its colorful background visuals. The ability to switch between characters at any time was also a fun factor and received special retrospective praise. Although not as fast-paced as games such as Contra, it is a well-rounded and underrated title. Power Blade 2 1992. This game is a platform type game that takes place in the year 2200 and follows the protagonist from the previous game as he is on his mission to defeat the Delta Corporation, which has created a new cyborg. This game shares a lot in common with the Mega Man series, such as the freedom to select stages and the ability to slide, as well as access to a host of powers and weaponry. There are also several new gameplay elements that allow the player to climb walls as well as fly and swim. The game is noted for challenging gameplay while having great graphics and solid control. There is also a lot of enjoyable platforming action. Because of its level of difficulty, there was some initial fear that this element would deter less experienced gamers. Despite some criticism, such as for its marketing, Power Blade 2 is considered an overall gem with a cult following among retro game fans. Darkwing Duck 1992 Darkwing Duck is a platforming game based on a Disney TV series where the player takes control of the caped crime fighter Darkwing Duck battling against the fiendish organization for world larceny. This game also has a Mega Man feel to it, choosing from different stages in a non-linear fashion, platforming and defeating various bosses whilst ultimately squaring off against the final boss Steelbeak. Initial gameplay begins with a standard gas gun that the player can equip with several types of gas throughout levels. Darkwing also has the ability to deflect incoming projectiles with escape as well as perform a hanging maneuver to avoid enemies. Darkwing Duck, the game, is considered a successful Disney game produced by Capcom that was well received by critics, especially for its polished graphics and engaging gameplay. There have been talks about a possible sequel in the future, as this game, despite being underrated, is highly loved by fans. Gunnack 1991 Gunnack is a vertically scrolling shooter where the player assumes the role of Gunnack, who fights a host of surreal enemies from a spaceship, which can be upgraded by acquiring wings, enabling the player to sustain two enemy hits instead of one, while also upgrading the player's weapons. There are five primary and four secondary weapons in the game, ranging from a flamethrower to a boomerang. Weapons have unlimited ammo as well. Money that is needed for these upgrades can be found floating throughout levels or being released by destroyed enemies. Gunnack is known for its good graphics, quick-paced action and notorious difficulty. Although it is relatively obscure among mainstream fans, Gunnack has amassed a cult following, being considered one of the underrated selections in the NES game library, and perhaps amongst its greatest shooters. 
Crystalis 1990. Crystalis is an action RPG that presents from a top-down perspective such that the player is able to move his or her characters in eight directions while also using swords and magical powers. The game is set in a post-apocalyptic world centuries after a planet-wide thermonuclear war has pushed back civilization into an antiquated existence filled with creatures that have strangely mutated. The player is in control of an unnamed antagonist who awakes from his cryogenic sleep without any memory of his past and must locate four elemental swords that can be combined to create the legendary sword called Crystallis. The game is known for masterfully blending various game genres and incorporating several elements from different RPGs and action-adventure games such as real-time combat, character progression, a huge exploratory world, as well as a vast array of puzzle-solving elements. Crystallis was praised for its advanced graphics, soundtrack, and interesting plot. It had some innovative elements such as switching between elemental weapons in order to defeat certain enemies. Despite some amount of repetitive gameplay, Crystallis is considered a hidden gem with a strong narrative and definitely ranks among the best and underrated action RPGs from the NES era. Felix the Cat, 1992 The player in this game controls the popular cartoon character Felix the Cat through many fun and interesting levels in order to defeat the evil and crazy professor who has also kidnapped Felix's girlfriend. The mechanics of the game are very simple. It is a standard side-scrolling platform with unique power-ups and weapons such as tanks, hot air balloons and submarines with levels ending in boss battles with the professor's henchmen. Felix starts each level with a basic magic ability using a boxing glove that can be used to attack enemies. As he collects power-ups, these abilities become more and more potent, increasing Felix's attack as well as doubling as a health meter. There are many interesting air-based and underwater sections in the game. Felix the Cat was well received upon release, with great praise going for it for its vibrant visuals, solid gameplay and faithful adaptation to the original source. The game has often been described as the proper way to make a video game with a popular license. DuckTales 2 1993. In DuckTales 2, the player takes control of the billionaire Scrooge McDuck in non-linear levels with smooth controls and the ability to interact with various objects in the environment. Interesting game mechanics include hooks for Scrooge to hang from and rafts for him to move across water. The player can also return to levels in order to collect more money. Scrooge has to overcome numerous obstacles and enemies which include boss fights, against notable characters from the DuckTales universe. The game's plot is based on finding the ultimate treasure whilst keeping Stooge's nemesis Flintheart Glomgold at bay. The game has fun platforming gameplay elements wherein Scrooge's cane is a central tool that can now be used to swing across gaps and interact with specific objects in the environment. DuckTales 2 received praise for its engaging gameplay, tight controls as well as charming graphics. The catchy music, fun exploratory elements and replayability factor of the game also drew heavy praise. The short length of the game received some criticism, but overall DuckTales 2 is considered an underrated and solid title in the NES library. Toki 1991 Toki is an arcade platform game that involves controlling a Tarzan-type character who has been transformed into an ape by a wicked sorcerer, who has also kidnapped the player's girlfriend. The gameplay involves spitting projectiles at enemies. There is a lot of run-and-gun type gameplay with interesting levels and challenging boss fights. There are also upgrades that allow the player to spit multiple projectiles at once or shoot different types of energy beams. Toki was very popular as an arcade game and did really well on the NES, earning praises for its gameplay including giving the player the abilities to swim, climb as well as ride trolleys. The overall balance of the game has been praised and it has been called a video game with an instant sort of appeal, making it a much underrated NES game, although over the years it has gained a cult following. Street Fighter 2010 
The Final Fight, 1990. This game is a side-scrolling platformer that has cyberpunk elements to it. It was intended to be a science fiction themed spin-off to the very popular arcade game Street Fighter. The player controls a cyborg version of the protagonist from the original Street Fighter game and is set in a future where he has retired from martial arts and become a scientist. The gameplay is more action platforming than traditional fighting games. The protagonist must defeat all enemies or a boss within a given time limit. Despite the Street Fighter tag, the game shares very little with the popular original game beyond the name of the protagonist. The game received praise for its challenging gameplay and unique narrative. Its high level of difficulty was one point of criticism. Although this game diverged from its roots, it still managed to hold its own as a distinct title with unique gameplay mechanics and a deferring narrative. The Guardian Legend 1989 the Guardian Legend is a hybrid action-adventure shoot-em-up style video game incorporating gameplay elements from popular games of the time while trying to create its own distinct identity. The player controls the Guardian, who is on his mission to stop the alien planetoid called Naju from heading into the Earth. The exploration phase is similar to The Legend of Zelda, wherein the player navigates a labyrinth from an overhead view. The shooting phase of the game is a more top-down shooting shooter style, like the game's Gradius or 1942. In this mode, the Guardian transforms into a spaceship, battling waves of enemies. As a result, the action becomes very quick-paced. The Guardian legend received praise upon release for its unique hybrid gameplay and immersive narrative. The graphics and sound of the game have been influential not only for their own genre, but for the NES in general. Clash at Demonhead 1990. This particular game is a non-linear, open-ended platformer with an absurd story that allows players to choose their own path among multiple routes, over 40 on count, on a map that is reminiscent of Super Mario Bros. 3. The protagonist encounters various sorts of enemies and gains special abilities like teleportation and shrinking. The combat elements of the game mainly involve shooting or jumping. The health of the player can be replenished with food items found throughout the game. At the time, it was not typical for NES games to have a dialogue with NPCs, so Clash at Demonhead was very interesting in that regard. Clash at Demonhead received praise for its non-linear gameplay, quirky dialogue and the overall challenge it offered. It received a favorable comparison to the Mega Man series. Retrospectively, the game still generates interest and is considered a quality title in the entire NES library. Mr. Gimmick 1993 Players in this game take on the role of a small green character who is gifted as a birthday toy to a little girl. When the girl's other toys kidnap her in jealousy, it is up to the player to rescue her. The special thing about Mr. Gimmick is its physics-based gameplay as a platformer with unique attack mechanics. The player is able to produce a star from his body, which can be used both as a weapon and as a temporary platform for reaching places or crossing obstacles. Mr. Gimmick is notoriously difficult to play, requiring precise controls and features many hidden areas and alternative endings, thoroughly increasing the game's replayability. Mr. Gimmick received praise for its charming graphics, the level of innovation in gameplay mechanics, as well as its challenging difficulty although the last element did put off a few players. Overall, Mr. Gimmick is considered one of the more underrated games, especially from a retrospective perspective. In the NES library, which is particularly noted for its technical achievements on the hardware. Shatterhand 1991 This is a side-scrolling action video game where the play controls a cyborg character battling against an evil organization known as Metal Command in the futuristic year 2030, where there are powerful mechanical cybernetic arms used to combat enemies. Most of the action in this game is side-scrolling and platforming with level-end bosses. As the player progresses, 
he or she gains the ability to super helper robots based on the combinations of symbols collected. In terms of gameplay, the player can punch enemy projectiles to deflect them and collect power-ups to enhance punching abilities. There is a non-linear aspect to the game as well based on the order the player chooses to tackle the levels. Shatterhand received good reviews for its quick-paced gameplay, graphics and the strategic element added by including the helper robot system. Shatterhand is also quite challenging in terms of difficulty, making it an interesting and fun choice to replay. Tiny Toon Adventures 1991 Here we have a platforming game based on the very popular animated TV series Tiny Toon Adventures produced by Warner Brothers. The player controls Buster Bunny on his mission to rescue his friend Babs, who has been kidnapped by the villain named Montana Max. There are many unlockable playable characters in the game as well, such as Pluck, Ducky, Dizzy Devil and Furball. The game is a typical platforming game with six stages that end in a boss fight through which the player runs and jumps through interesting levels filled with enemies. One of the interesting features of the game is to switch between Buster and the secondary character, adding an extra strategic element that can be utilized to overcome specific challenges. Duck Vader makes a cameo in the game as a secret boss. Overall, Tiny Toon Adventures The Game was well received with a bright and shiny graphics and enjoyable gameplay, as well as faithfulness to the source material, a quality that impressed a lot of players. Willow 1989 Willow is an action-adventure game based on the fantasy film of the same name that was directed by Ron Howard and produced by George Lucas. The player in the game takes on the role of Willow Ufgood, a reluctant farmer who has to become a heroic adventurer by protecting a special baby from the evil queen seeking to fulfill a prophecy. The gameplay, similar to The Legend of Zelda, involves non-linear exploration from an overhead perspective. There are also various dungeons to explore that end in a boss fight. When it was released, Willow got huge praise for the vastness of its world and the core RPG elements. Critics deemed the gameplay engaging and the game overall as a faithful adaptation of the film's fantasy setting. Retrospectively, the game remains very playable and is a unique mix of action, adventure and RPG mechanics of the era. It has often been favorably and unfavorably compared to another underrated game in this list, namely Crystallis. Captain America and the Avengers 1991 This classic arcade game lets the player control one of Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye or Vision with the goal of the game being to stop Red Skull in his evil plans. The gameplay is based on typical beat'em style action with each Avenger having unique abilities like Captain America having his throwable shield or Iron Man shooting repulsor rays. Hawkeye's firing arrows or vision emitting energy beams. There are also the classic evil Marvel villains such as Ultron, Wizard and Crossbones. The arcade version of this game supported up to four players with NES versions having at least cooperative gameplay. The game was well received for its comic book style of graphics, cooperative multiplayer and for being a straightforward and faithful adaptation of its source material. Because of its fun game mechanics, Captain America and the Avengers has risen to the status of a cult retro NES game. Rockin' Cats 1991 In this game, players control a jazz-playing cat named Willie, also known as the Rockin' Cat, who is on a mission to rescue his girlfriend from a mob boss. The game's overall narrative and aesthetic have been heavily influenced by American cartoons, giving it a fresh and colorful style. Gameplay involves using Willie's unique weapon, a punch gun that is used both to attack enemies and to navigate surroundings. The punch game enables the player to grab onto and swing from hooks, bouncing Willy high into the air and grabbing or throwing certain objects. There are five main levels with bosses at the end. Rockin' Cats did quite well upon release, being praised for its unique mechanics, especially the versatile use of the punch gun in fighting and platforming, as well as for its vibrant graphics and interesting characters. This game is a unique and fun one in the rich NES library of games.
Roller Games 1990. Roller Games is based on the TV show of the same name, which was a mixture of roller derby with professional wrestling type theatrics. The player can choose among one of three teams from the show the T Birds, Hot Flash, and the Rockers. The basic plot involves rescuing the manager from the evil Vipers. The gameplay is a blend of platforming with side scrolling beat em up action. The player automatically moves forward on his or her roller skates. They can speed up or slow down but cannot change direction. There are various obstacles and hazards along the way, concluding with a boss fight. Roller Games is known for its high difficulty level, requiring tight and precise controls. Reviews for the game were mixed, with it receiving positive feedback for its unique concept and fast paced action, along with some unique gameplay mechanics. Overall, players still remember the game for its frustrating, difficult but challenging and exciting experience. Kabuki Quantum Fighter 1991 Kabuki Quantum Fighter, again, is a side scrolling platform game whose story is set in the future when Colonel Scott O'Connor allows his mind to be digitally converted to raw binary code in order to defeat a powerful computer virus that is threatening the world. When he enters the digital realm, O'Connor's consciousness somehow manifests as a Kabuki dancer due to some amount of data contamination on the side of his great grandfather who really used to be a kabuki dancer. Each stage of gameplay is filled with enemy viruses and challenges, concluding in a difficult boss fight requiring strategic mastery. O'Connor's attack is whipping enemies with his hair, along with being able to kick and use a variety of special weapons like bombs and energy guns. Kabuki Quantum Fighter received appreciation upon release for its unique premise and narrative, along with great character design and smooth controls. Overall, this game is one of the underrated standouts in the NES library due to its narrative and design. Little Nemo the Dream Master 1990. This game is based on an animated film which itself is based on a comic about a young boy, Nemo, who is invited to the kingdom of Slumberland in his dreams, whose king has been kidnapped and whom Nemo must rescue. The game has some unique gameplay mechanics. Nemo can jump and throw candy. Feeding candy to certain creatures can help to befriend them, and Nemo can then ride these creatures or even transform them. Little Nemo the Dream Master has eight levels, each representing a separate dream world. Its creative gameplay mechanics were highly praised upon release. Its engaging graphics and level design also received huge positive feedback. The only lasting criticism was the notorious difficulty of the game even by NES standards. This is a beautiful game of huge retrospective nostalgia. Star Tropics 1990 This action-adventure video game puts the player in control of a young boy from Seattle who is on a quest to find his lost uncle, who happens to be an archaeologist in the tropical islands of the South Seas. The gameplay consists of exploration and dungeon crawling. The exploration is in classic RPG style where the player talks to villages and uncovers information that helps him in his quest. This part involves a lot of puzzle solving elements. The dungeon elements were high on action, similar to The Legend of Zelda in many respects. The player starts with a yo-yo and moves up in terms of weapons. The game's original NES package in real life, when dipped in water, reveals a code needed to progress in the game. Star Tropics was well received for its engaging narrative and successful blend of action and puzzle solving elements, while also incorporating the real world in a small capacity. Although it received some criticism for its overly cryptic puzzles and high difficulty, Star Tropics remains an excellent game that should be considered a classic. Little Samson 1992. In this game, the player can control four characters between a human boy, a dragon, a golem, and a mouse. The kingdom's emperor summons these characters to aid him in defeating an evil prince who has escaped confinement and threatens peace with his army of monsters. Each character has special abilities. The boy can climb walls and ceilings and throw bells. The dragon can fly and breathe fire. The golem is able to walk into spikes and is invincible to certain attacks, while finally the mouse can fit through very narrow spaces and walk on ceilings and walls whilst being very quick. The game has many elements apart from the main action levels, including vertical climbing levels and even auto-scrolling levels. 
Upon release, it received good reviews for its vibrant visuals, immersive gameplay mechanics and fun mechanic of switching among the several interesting characters. Although the sales of the game were not that high, it is considered one of the great standouts in the NES library that has since become an expensive collector's item. River City Ransom 1989 This game is open world and an action RPG where the player takes on the role of a pair of high school students who must rescue their friend by defeating the powerful kidnapper Slick whilst dealing with several annoying gangs along the way. River City Ransom combines several elements of beat-em-up games with elements from RPGs. The player has to fight his way through different parts of the city, including a park, a factory, a high school and several districts. The game is unique for its dialogue system, where defeated enemies drop items and utter amusing phrases. The game overall is non-linear in nature, allowing players to explore freely. River City Ransom received great reviews for blending action with RPG, as well as its sense of humor. The two-player cooperative gameplay also drew praise. Overall, the game has had a lasting impact on a whole generation of subsequent games that draw inspiration from its special blend of genres and gameplay mechanics. Bucky O'Hare 1992 Bucky O'Hare is an action platformer based on the animated TV series of the same name, which itself is based on a comic book series. The player controls Bucky, who is a human-like green hair and the captain of a spaceship whose crewmates have been captured by the Toad Empire and must be rescued. At the start, the player can choose among four planets to rescue either of his crewmates. Once rescued, characters become playable and can be switched at any point with each possessing very interesting unique abilities like hovering, climbing walls or using a laser cannon. After the initial stages, there are a series of engrossing stages on the Toad Mothership, leading to a final showdown with the Air Marshal and the Complex. The game was widely praised for its graphics and switchability of characters, as well as panned for its excessive difficulty. Overall, Bucky O'Hare remains a memorable game in the NES library, to which players still retrospectively gravitate. Kiwi Craze, A Bird-Brained Adventure 1989 The player, here in this game, takes on the role of a kiwi bird named Tiki who has to save his friends who have been kidnapped by a large blue leopard seal. The theme of the game is set in New Zealand and the maps featured are largely inspired by the landscape of the country. Gameplay involves a lot of jumping and firing arrows as well as using various interesting types of transportation such as balloons, hovercrafts and UFOs. Overall, Kiwi Craze, a bird-brained adventure, received generally good reviews and positive feedback for its charming character design, unique gameplay mechanics and the level of challenge it provided in its completion. It remains a quirky, memorable and underrated game in the NES library. The Adventures of Lolo 1989 This game is a part of the Egoland video game series that is popular in Japan, where from Adventures of Lolo served as an introduction to the series to Western audiences. The player controls a small, round character called Lolo on a quest to rescue his love the Princess Lala, who has been kidnapped by the evil King Egger. In his castle, there are several single-screen puzzle rooms filled with various enemies and obstacles. The primary objective is to collect the heart framers that will lead to a gem that completes the level and leads to the next room. The Adventures of Lolo was received well by gamers and appreciated for its clever puzzle designs, charming characters and overall challenge in difficulty. The success of the game led to several sequels, continuing Lolo and Lala's adventures against Egger. Ikari Warriors 1987 This is a vertically scrolling run-and-gun arcade game where the player takes on the role of commandos who must endure enemy soldiers, tanks and helicopters while trying to get to the village of Ikari. This was during a period when there existed several clones of the popular game Commando on the market, but what separated Ikari Warriors were rotary joysticks and a two-player cooperative mode. There is also the ability to enter and control various vehicles. Overall, Ikari Warriors was very successful in the arcades and on the NES, receiving particular positive feedback for its action-packed gameplay. The NES version did receive some criticism for its excessive level 
of difficulty and less sophisticated controls when compared to the arcade version. The overall success of the game, however, was a breakthrough release in Western markets for SNK, the parent company of the game. Ikari Warriors has spawned multiple sequels as well as some clones. Ring King 1987 In Ring King, the player assumes the role of a boxer who has to work his way up the ranks to become the world champion. The gameplay includes a lot of customization from looks to skills. There are single matches as well as tournament-style bouts. The player can perform several types of punches as well as dodges and blocks. A unique feature in the game is the recovery phase between rounds, wherein the players can regain their stamina by rotating their controllers as fast as possible. Defining elements of Rinking are its hilarious and exaggerated animations and comical set of special attacks. Rinking received positive reviews for its quick-paced gameplay and unique visual style, although a few players found the controls hard to master. It has managed to remain both fun and funny across NES games and remain relevant to this very day. The Magic of Sherazade 1989 This game stands out because of its unique blend of action-adventure, role-playing and turn-based strategy genres. The player must travel through different time periods in the mission to rescue a princess from an evil wizard. Gameplay alternates between real-time action as well as turn-based battles, reminiscent of Zelda and Final Fantasy. There are huge worlds and dungeons to explore and collect items from. The game has a time-traveling mechanic which plays a significant role in solving puzzles and advancing the storyline. There is also a day-night cycle that majorly affects gameplay and events. The hybrid gameplay and compelling narrative of the game were praised upon release. The magic spell effects, visual environment, plot twists and interesting challenges, all of these received positive feedback and attention. The magic of Sherazade is considered a gem in the NES library for its attempt at innovative features. Several games of the immediate future, such as Super Ninja Boy, have paid homage to it in some form. The Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout 1990 The Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout was a part of a series of games that featured characters from the Looney Tunes. The plot of this game revolves around Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday and how he has to get to a party after overcoming various obstacles and challenges in his path, set up by jealous Looney Tunes characters who are not invited to the party. There are boss battles with characters like Daffy Duck, Sylvester the Cat and Yosemite Sam. Bugs can use a mallet as a weapon to stun his enemies and destroy specific blocks or trigger switches. There are also bonus games in between normal levels that allow the player to earn extra lives. Upon release, the game received positive reviews, with critics praising the vibrant yet subdued graphics of the game, coupled with solid gameplay, especially the platforming elements. There was some criticism regarding repetitive level design and a lack of challenge in playing the game. Overall, though, this game remains hugely nostalgic and purely fun to play for a while. Gremlins 2 The New Batch 1990 This game is based on a movie of the same name wherein the player takes control of Gizmo, the friendly Mogwai who must navigate through various levels inside a skyscraper filled with diverse environments and enemies. Gizmo's primary weapons against the gremlin enemies is a tomato that he throws which he can upgrade to matchsticks, paperclips or even a Rambo-style bow. Levels end in a boss fight with notable gremlin characters from the movie. There are also many bonus stages in the game. Overall, the game was quite well received. The colorful graphics, well done soundtrack and faithful adaptation of the movie received wide praise among gamers and critics. The difficulty of the game was described as challenging but fair. Overall, this was not only a successful adaptation of a movie into a video game, but it turns out that Gremlins 2 became a classic NES title in its own right. Krusty's Funhouse 1992 This puzzle platformer features the very popular character Krusty the Clown from The Simpsons. The player controls Krusty and each level is a puzzle in which a number of rats must be exterminated. Using various objects and obstacles, the player must create a path for the rats to follow in order to goad them into an extermination device. There are all sorts of creatures from Martians to flying pigs who are attempting to stop Krusty's progress. Each stage has characters like Bart, 
Omer and others running the extermination device. The game received quite positive reviews for its clever puzzle design, colorful graphics and faithful representation of Simpsons characters. The high difficulty level of the game, particularly during the later levels, was seen as a problem by some. Having been favorably compared to the iconic puzzle game Lemmings, Krusty's Funhouse is one of the surprise gems of the entire NES library. Zoda's Revenge – Star Tropics 2 1994. The sequel to the original Star Tropics game, the player resumes the role of Mike Jones and is given several improvements over the previous game such as the ability to move diagonally and attack in several directions. Mike starts the game unarmed but can gain weapons as powerful as psychic shockwaves. There are several chapters in the game such as one set in ancient Egypt, one in the Stone Age one in the Wild West, and so on. Mike also meets several historically important characters such as Cleopatra, Sherlock Holmes, Da Vinci, and so on. Upon release, Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2 received some positive and some mixed reviews. The improvement of the control system over the original game as well as the diverse level of settings overall received a good share of positive feedback. A section of gamers did, however, complain that this sequel was not as innovative or immersive as its predecessor. Be that as it may, the game was still overall considered to have plenty of action as well as significant educational value. Wario's Woods 1994 Wario's Woods is notable for being the last officially licensed game that was released for the NES in North America. The player controls Toad, whose objective is to clear monsters from a playing field by arranging them in rows of matching colors. Toad is able to move around the playing field, picking up and rearranging monsters as well as bombs, with the goal to line up at least one bomb with monsters of the same color. Several characters from the Super Mario series appear, some like Wario, who cause trouble from time to time, some like Wario, who cause trouble from time to time, while others like Birdo appear to offer motivation as well as advice. The game includes a single player mode wherein the player must clear the board off all monsters within a certain time limit. There is also a competitive two player mode that is a lot of fun wherein two players compete to clear their board first. Wario's Woods has mostly received good reviews, especially for its unique gameplay mechanics, graphics and its strategic depth. The two player mode also received wide praise and was compared favorably to that of Tetris. Wario's Woods has remained a puzzle gem in the NES library over the years. Deja Vu 1990 This adventure game is set in the 1940s world of Chicago, where the protagonist has been blamed for a murder he doesn't remember committing. The objective of the game is to regain these lost memories and unravel the mystery of the murder, utilizing a point-and-click interface. Gameplay is focused mainly on elements of exploration as well as puzzle solving. Interaction takes place from a first-person perspective with commands like open, examine, and use. There is also an inventory to store crucial items needed to solve the mystery. Overall, the game has been praised and recognized for its atmospheric setting, immersive narrative and overall engaging but somewhat difficult puzzles. The user interface has influenced a generation of future adventure and puzzle games. Its non-linear structure and need for strategic depth also garnered a lot of praise, making Deja Vu a memorable game in the NES catalog. Adventures in the Magic Kingdom 1990 This video game is based on the Disneyland theme park and players herein are tasked with finding the six required keys to the castle of the Magic Kingdom. Attractions include the Haunted Mansion, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Space Mountain and several others. Each attraction offers unique gameplay experiences. For example, the Haunted Mansion represents a side-scrolling platformer where the player has to avoid ghosts. In a similar vein, the Space Mount attraction is one where the player is on a spaceship wherein he or she has to react to commands. Adventures in the Magic Kingdom received mixed to positive reviews when it came out. The game's vibrant graphic and intuitive level designs were praised. The varied gameplay and overall Disney theme also received positive feedback from players and critics. The only lasting criticism of the game was its short length. Adventures in the Magic Kingdom remains a fun, underrated game with a huge amount of nostalgia.
Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom 1991 The game Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom is set in the very whimsical Salad Kingdom whose inhabitants are human-like fruits and vegetables. The kingdom is under attack by Minister Pumpkin who has also kidnapped Princess Tomato. The player has to take on the role of Sir Cucumber, a knight who has been tasked by the ruler King Broccoli to rescue the princess and defeat the pumpkin. Gameplay is quite different because it is basically a point-and-click adventure wherein players choose commands such as look, move and take to interact with the environment and solve puzzles. There are also a large number of mini-games present. Overall, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom was well received, especially for its characters and puzzles. Its distinctive premise and approach, as well as light-hearted nature and humor, made it quite memorable for players, even as a retrospective dose of nostalgia. Dusty Diamond's All-Star Softball 1990 This quirky game does not have licensed teams or players, but has a roster full of colorful and quite unique fictional characters with varying skill sets. There are both single and multiplayer modes with the option of cooperative play as well. The game also offers a variety of offbeat field settings. Thus, each field comes with its own set of challenges and offers a deep strategic element to the game. Despite being a softball game, the rules are more reminiscent of baseball, with players choosing to play either fast pitch or slow pitch. Dusty Diamond's All-Star Softball received mixed reviews upon release, but it was all acrossly praised for its unique characters, field settings and hugely entertaining gameplay. There were some issues raised with controls and graphics, but overall it is agreed that this remains a very fun, quirky and underrated game in the vast NES library. Metal Storm 1991 Metal Storm lets the player control a futuristic robot, the M308 Gunner, which is tasked with eliminating a massive threat that is heading towards the Earth. Gameplay involves shooting all kinds of enemies, dodging various obstacles and using the Gravity Flip ability, something that allows the player to reverse gravity. This gravity mechanic is not just a gimmick, but something that is deeply integrated into the game's design and gameplay. There are various enhancing power-ups and some quite interesting boss battles. Metal Storm was well received, being praised particularly for the gravity reversing mechanics, as well as its detailed graphics. However, due to its late release in the cycle, the game did not achieve as much commercial success. Over the years, it has gained well-deserved recognition as a hidden gem in the NES library, especially for its innovation. Whoopem 1991 Whoopem follows the journey of a Native American who has to venture out into the world and gather various totems. Gameplay elements involve traditional platforming, allowing the player to use a spear to attack as well as collect power-ups which may include additional health, increase in spear length or some additional abilities. The spear can also be used to perform high jumps in order to reach platforms as well as to dodge enemies. The game is non-linear in nature and the stages represent elements like fire, water, air and earth, with each ending in a difficult boss fight and giving the player a new power. Whoopem received mixed reviews, with the game's decent graphics, peppy music and non-linearity receiving praise. The game received favorable comparisons to the hugely popular Mega Men series due to similarity in gameplay styles and the ability to select stages. Overall, Whoopem remains a solid revisit for some fun NES gaming. Adventure Island 1988 Adventure Island is a side-scrolling platformer where the player controls a young man on a quest to save a princess from an evil witch doctor. The game has several interesting stages that end in fun boss fights. The health bar of the player depletes over time, so he or she must keep collecting fruits to prevent themselves from dying. There are also various rolling boulders, fire pits and terrain gaps that the player must navigate through. There are various fun weapons like axes and skateboards scattered in eggs throughout the levels. Adventure Island received a lot of praise for its fun and challenging gameplay, vibrant and colorful graphics and very catchy music. It became so popular that it spawned several clones. Overall, Adventure Island is a game that has stood the test of time and is something players keep returning to for nostalgia. It is one of the standout gems in the NES library, considered one of the most difficult among all of them. 
Total Recall 1990. This action platformer is based on the film of the same name, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. The player controls the film's protagonist, loosely following the plot of the movie, starting in the streets of a futuristic Earth and eventually moving to Mars. Gameplay is a mix of side-scrolling and exploring. The player must defeat a variety of enemies, from mutants to thugs. The game switches to a 3D view when the player must face off against enemies using a gun or his fists. One feature of the game is the inclusion of scenes from the movie as playable scenarios. An example of this is a relentless chase in the game by a cab driver, which is mirrored in a high-speed chase scene in the film. The game performed well in other versions, but its NES version received a lot of criticism for graphic issues. Overall, the game has received some praise for being faithful to the movie and being an entertaining experience. Many consider it an underrated title in the vast and rich NES library. The Cryon Conquest 1990 The Cryon Conquest lets the player control a witch who has to save the world from an evil army of robots called Cryons. The player has a variety of magical abilities such as shooting magical projectiles, flying on a broomstick or conjuring a shield. Gameplay involves using several magic systems which can be switched at any point. Overall, similarity in gameplay has led to comparisons to the Mega Man series. However, this game has a much more complex magic system and emphasizes vertical platforming in some areas, introducing innovations even before the Mega Man series did. The Cryon Conquest received praise for its magic system and challenging gameplay. However, it suffered due to too many comparisons with bigger franchises, such as Mega Man. It was a fun game in its own right that some consider an underrated gem. Blades of Steel 1998 This is a popular ice hockey video game that includes fist fights between players as part of the game. When two players fight, a winner is decided and the loser is sent to the penalty box, giving the winner's team a one-man advantage. All teams are fictional but are based on real Canadian and American cities. The game is popular because of its fast-paced action. Players pass the puck and execute several offensive and defensive maneuvers. There are also several mini-games that occur between periods, providing a break from standard gameplay. These mini-games can be quite good, like, say, Contra. On release, Blades of Steel was praised for its attention to details such as penalties and offside, apart from its quick-paced gameplay getting a lot of positive feedback. This is considered one of the best hockey games of all time and remains a huge classic among retro sports fans. Burai Fighter 1990 Burai Fighter is a side-scrolling shooter that lets the player control an unnamed space pilot who must fight the Burai, an alien race who are trying to eliminate humanity. Burai Fighter is noted for its scrolling levels that go in all directions, not just the conventional left or right or down to up. This offers a level of freedom that is not seen in shooters of that era. Gameplay mainly involves maneuvering the spacecraft and firing in any of eight possible directions, while also allowing for several maneuvers. On release, the game received positive reviews for its interesting and challenging gameplay, innovation in multi-directionality, as well as vibrant and colorful graphics. The only lasting criticism was that it could get repetitive after a while. Overall, Burai Fighter remains an innovative and entertaining gem in the NES library, but not that well known. A Boy and His Blob Trouble on Blobolonia 1998 Here the player takes on the role of a boy who befriends an alien blob creature and can feed it a variety of jelly beans to transform it into various tools and items that the boy can use to navigate through puzzles in the game. Examples include a honey jelly bean transforming the blob into a hummingbird or a licorice one making it a ladder. The plot is to save the home planet Blobolonia from an evil emperor and gameplay alternates between Earth and Blobolonia. This game is well known for its unique gameplay mechanics, the narrative of the warm relationship between the boy and the blob, as well as the huge number of fun and satisfying puzzles in the game. The game's level designs received particular praise. Overall, the game is an underrated blob of fun and challenge.
Rygar 1987. Rygar is an action adventure game that was originally for the arcade but later ported to the NES with some significant changes. The player controls a dead warrior who has been resurrected and armed with a weapon called Discarmer, which is a long shield with a chain attached. The arcade version of Rygar was linear and side scrolling, but the NES version is a mix of side scrolling and top down perspective, featuring a much more open ended gameplay. Frustrating there is no save or password function within the game. The main weapon, Discarmer, can be swung left or right and used to attack from a distance as well as be enhanced through power-ups. Overall, Rygar was quite well received with big praise for its large navigable world as well as the Discarmer weapon which was seen as an enjoyable mechanic. Apart from the save thing, Rygar is a solid game to go back to for fun. BLW Prisoners of War 1989 This is a beat-em-up game wherein the player controls a military prisoner who must fight his way out of a prisoner of war camp and reach the enemy's main base. There are a variety of combat elements like punches, kicks, jump kicks and special attacks that damage all on-screen enemies. Apart from melee combat, there are weapons that can be picked up such as knives and automatic rifles. The arcade version was two-player but the NES is only single player. There is also a new power up system in the NES as well. POW Prisoners of War was well praised for its challenging gameplay, good graphics, as well as decent variation in combat moves. The difficulty of the game drew some criticism. Overall, the game remained memorable, having been compared to huge franchises such as Double Dragon. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu 1990 Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu is a side-scrolling platformer featuring Jackie Chan as a playable character who embarks on a quest to save his sister, who has been kidnapped by an evil sorcerer. The player must utilize Jackie Chan's martial arts skills, such as using punches, flying kicks, and even flip kicks. There are various power-ups that give Jackie Chan the ability to perform special moves like a tornado attack or quake attack. The player only has one life to begin with but can live up to five times initially, apart from earning extra continues. Jackie Chan's action kung fu is remembered for its large, colorful sprites as well as seamless animation, being quite impressive for the time. It was also quite challenging as a game to finish. Critics praised its graphics, smooth moves and the variety of special moves. It is remembered as an iconic yet underrated NES game featuring a martial arts legend. Tombs and Treasures 1991 This is a point-and-click graphical adventure game set in the mysterious ruins of an ancient Mayan civilization in the city of Chichen Itza. The player is on a quest to find a missing archaeologist as well as lost treasure. Gameplay involves exploration, solving puzzles, as well as interacting with the environment using look, use and move commands in an effort to decipher various Mayan hieroglyphics. The game alternates between using a three-quarters overhead view during exploration and then switching to first person when entering a specific site. Tombs and Treasures features turn-based combat sequences unlike most adventure games of the time. There is also a very simple but useful experience points system embedded in the game. Upon release, the game received heavy praise for its detailed graphics, intriguing puzzles and the incorporation of real historical elements into the plot and gameplay Play, making it good educational value. Marvelous Verdict The NES has remained popular even decades after its original release. Gamers and even casual players continue playing the games on official hardware as well as through official and unofficial means of emulation. Playing NES games as adults bring back feelings of childhood and a less complicated time in our lives. Some of the greatest NES games still hold up to modern standards of fun and entertainment. The innovation and creativity of an era far gone can also evoke an emotional response among players who grew up with these games. There is also a huge community around playing NES and retro games in general. This feeling of participation and collaboration also enhances this experience of going back to old games. We hope you enjoyed this nostalgic marvelous video. See you in the next one.